It's winter in the UK and temperatures are around about zero degrees. Today we've driven these four cars in convoy in the same roads at the same time so we can get a comparison for efficiency. Why these four cars? Well, we just happened to go in this car and collect these three cars, but it meant that basically we did a journey on the same roads at the same time, we compare efficiency. And why is that gonna be interesting? Well, this is a Tesla Model Y long range, but it doesn't have the aero covers on it. This car here is exactly the same car, but it does have the aero covers on it. So you've got the same tires. This is a Model Y performance. So is that gonna be much less efficient because it's a performance and because it has bigger wheels? we can get the comparison here and work out their pro rata range. And we went up in this car, which I've been running for the last couple of months, and much as I love it, it is not very efficient. So this is gonna be an example of how Tesla compares to some other cars, albeit the i5N really is a hardcore track performance car. And like I say, much as I love it, it is probably one of the least efficient EVs I've driven. So <laughs> what exactly does an i5N do in cold weather? Bear it in mind, and you'll see in the montage in a minute as we film a bit of our day, we left with four of us in this car with snow. Uh, temperatures now just about crept up above zero, but it's been a cold day. You can look at the state of the cars, salty roads, wet roads. So this is a good kind of benchmark for what's about the worst efficiency you can get from each one of these cars and how does each compare? What does it mean for real world range and efficiency? So that's all coming up in this video. Cue a bit of montage of the earlier part of our day. And then I'm gonna work out some numbers and come back to you with the data in a moment. Okay, so this car today uh, got the same efficiency driving back, which are the numbers I'm gonna use for the, all of these cars. It's just the section coming back when we're all in convoy. But today this car got 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which actually is about as good as it gets. So I have to be honest, sometimes just doing the commute in the morning, obviously it's cold at the moment. Um, I'm looking at more like two miles per kilowatt hour, that's all. But today, 2.5, and that includes on the motorway at 70 with four of us, uh, there's snow in earlier as well on the journey up. Right, the numbers I'm gonna give you now are just for the return journey to compare the cars. So on the 63 mile return journey, this car used 34% of its battery. That would give this car pro rata 185 miles of range. Its efficiency, 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So 185 miles of range out of the car with the biggest battery here. <laughs> Okay, look, this is a proper performance car. You do not buy this car for big range and superb efficiency, big wide tires, and it's just not the most aerodynamic. But boy, I love it. Fantastic car. I've been using this for the last couple of months, and I've got to admit, it's, it's grown on me even more, and it's, it's a bundle of fun. So the Model Y Force is also on Pirelli P0 tires. It's also on 21-inch wheels. I think the tires aren't quite as wide, though. Um, they're so dirty, I can't even see the tire sizes. But... Nonetheless, a good comparison. Now this car used 26% of its battery for that same journey on the same road at the same speed at the same time, averaging 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, 2.5. <laughs> so that gives this a real world range in those conditions today of 242 miles, which is a lot better than the 185-ish of the Hyundai. Okay, um, yes, better performance there from the Tesla, always efficient, both heat pump cars, but the Tesla always does well for efficiency. But what's the penalty for performance Model Y compared to the long ranges? Well, let's move on. Okay, so this white one here is a dual motor long range and it's got the aero covers and the hand cooked tires. So this one used 25% of its battery. So actually 1% less than the Model Y performance. Actually, I think the Y performance did quite well there, to be honest. Efficiency 270 watt hours per mile, so about 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So yes, a bit more efficient, given this one a range today of 252 miles. So 10 miles more than a performance version. I don't think that comparison's too bad, to be honest. But let's say you like to have the dual motor long range, but what's the difference without these aero covers? You just use the center cap and nut cap. Well, this one, 25.3% use. So it did use a little bit more than this one. 
Efficiency 276 watt hours per mile, so 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour compared to the 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour of that one, giving this one a range today of 249 miles. So if you were to drive it from 100% to zero, that means this car in theory would do about three miles less because it's got the covers taken off. What other variables are there? Well, maybe driving style is a slight element to it. Uh, maybe the wear on the tires could be a slight element to it. Battery temperatures should have been quite similar. All these cars had a charge, um, well, these three testers had a charge before we did the return journey. So they were all from cold at the same time, then they all charged up for the same amount of time. So I couldn't measure the battery temperatures there at the time, but roughly speaking, they would have all been on a similar plane. And although we didn't charge the Hyundai for the return journey, it was already warm from the upwards journey. I say warm, that's the only car here that displays its battery temperature and it only, only sat at six degrees. So, you know, if that had charged for the return journey, it might have been a tad better, but honestly, that's as good a number as I've ever had from that car. So you can take that as a fair game. So uh, an interesting comparison, something we just did as part of our daily journey. It would have been nice to have had, okay, a standard range. I can hear you saying now, a standard range. A standard range with the bigger wheels, uh, maybe a Model Y Juniper for comparison. But obviously, that's all challenging to do, stuff we can probably do another day. But we just grabbed the camera this morning as we set off to go and collect three cars. So that's what we did. I hope you found that useful and interesting. If you're thinking about a Y versus performance versus a Hyundai Ionic 5, then I hope that has especially been interesting. If you're not doing lots of journeys, the Ionic 5 is a bundle of fun. <laughs> this is also quick, but in a much more efficient way. And these, of course, are great for range and efficiency. That's it for me for now. I'm gonna go inside because it's still only just above zero degrees here. So I'll catch you on another one soon. Take care.